Oh, yes, of course. Demo is by Benjamin Zepke. Um, he's going to talk or demo to you uh, Fast Attack to Functional Computer Vision with Record. So enjoy. Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Um, not the chair, now the presenter. Um, what I'd like to talk about is a bit about uh, high performance computing, but on one machine, on one CPU with computer vision. So not that high performance. Um, well, that's my agenda for today. Um, first, we start with an introduction, and then I'll try um, to adapt the Big Record Library. Um, for those of you who've been, uh, last year, I think, was in London, the List Symposium, I talked a bit about a computer vision library in Record, and uh, this library was unfortunately not capable of any real-time analysis, so you have to be faster than a standard library to get into real-time analysis, and uh, that's what I want to talk about today. And then we have some demo, hopefully some live demo, and uh, some conclusions. So, first of all, um, we've heard about common Lisp, and um, what I want to motivate again is uh, computer vision, very nice and uh, exciting topic, but uh, is fast versus interactive, is it a contradiction or what? So, uh, and then I'll present uh, some nice data source which I brought with me today. It's uh, this one. It's uh, called the uh, Kinect sensor, built from Microsoft. So first of all, uh, for those of you who are not into computer vision, what is computer vision? Computer vision is a broad research field and it has an ambitious aim. So we mainly want to teach the computer how we see, or how to see. So quite demanding task because uh, it's one of the most complex tasks we are doing every millisecond right now. You are performing some vision. Um, and to do so, you really need a lot of uh, stuff. We already heard image processing. Of course, you need to filter some images, remove some noise, do some image analysis. But you also may need to take into account some cognitive psychology stuff, some knowledge representation, and also machine learning. So it's really broad field. Okay, and if you want to, let's say, exploit or explore um, interactively new methods, for example, or want to try out some modification on methods you already know, um, you may want to do this interactively. And we always, uh, we also heard today that this is one strength of Lisp, yeah, doing things interactively. And um, for this talk and uh, for the demo, I selected Racket because we are using Racket currently in the University of uh, Hamburg for undergraduate students uh, as a lecture series and as a practice for them. So um, easy to get into, but um, Racket is uh, interactively interpreted and thus uh, often or nearly every time slower than these ugly, or you heard this, compiled languages like C or C++. So of course, you can just type in and then put enter and you get your results from the readable print loop. But uh, usually this leads to a much slower execution. Um, you see it here where you could say, okay, this one is pre-compiled, it's highly optimized and runs directly on the machine. And on the other way, there's Dr. Record trying to do its best. Okay, so um, when we want to um, do interactive, um, real-time analysis of images, we need to have some, let's call this a nice source of image data. So when I want to analyze a picture, well, it doesn't matter if it takes one second, two seconds, result comes up, okay. But what if uh, we have some continuous stream of data? And uh, that's where I brought this sensor. And um, it's not just like a camera, and I hope it's... Uh, yeah, it's not already switched on, so it doesn't take pictures of you. So it consists of uh, an RGB camera, which is uh, located here, but it also has another source of optics and uh, another sort of optics. And this is uh, 
by the dashed lines, uh, it's an infrared camera. And on the other way, so on the very left, it has an infrared laser emitter. So why these two sources? So of course, the camera is there for the camera. But um, with the other two, you really get a depth information because you know which kind of pattern you are emitting with your infrared laser. And you are looking at this pattern from a quite different angle. So by solving the correspondence problem between the image pattern and your viewed or your observed pattern, you can really get depth information. And so this is not just a camera where you would expect RGB as an output, but the real output is RGBD, which is somehow called, sometimes called depth information or two and a half D. Because, of course, you don't have really 3D information where you can look behind things and turn scenes around. But you have at least the distance to the objects. And uh, the res resolution of this sensor, it's a sensor of first generation, is about 640 to 480 pixels. And it delivers the images at 30 frames per second. Um, this has been widely used. Um, as you see, it was somewhere there. No. But this belongs to the Xbox, uh, so this is a commercial system. Um, it's used for games. It's also been used for virtual dressing rooms, for better human-computer interaction, virtual realities. Um, and also, some low-cost robots are carrying this device as a vision system. And you can see, if you're interested, and there are many, many more innovative uses of the sensor. So. What if we want to use this sensor, continuous data stream of images, with our formally developed and described Vic Racket image analysis library? Um, there are three different things I want to mention today, which uh, did or did not make any success in putting this nice tiny stuff uh, for real-time image analysis. Um, the first one is the reuse of memory. So, usually, you want to avoid some time because each new picture that is coming into needs new memory. So you need to allocate this memory and this has to be safe somehow. Yeah? So when we following the functional paradigm, we would say, okay, give me this new image. When the next image comes in, give me this new image and the garbage collector then has to somehow clean it up. Um, <clears throat> we also introduced and uh, we are very optimistic, these may we call this uh, record notation or scheme notation, these uh, suffixed versions where you just overwrite images and uh, pass the results as arguments. Um, however, when we tested this, it showed no significant speed up at all. So, why is this uh, the case? Um, to be honest, I don't know really. But um, it seems that uh, Racket is allocating memory at nearly no cost. Yeah? So the pure time of allocation seems to be quite constant. But you, of course, are saving memory because you don't need to allocate new one. And what we also observed is that on the long run, we keep the garbage collection time low, of course, because no more memory is allocated. One thing that really did improve the runtime is safe versus unsafe access. I think it's the same um, for some common Lisp implementations where you access vectors. And that's the same for record here. We observed uh, after some fruitful discussions at the last, uh, last European Lisp symposium that the access of record is boundary checking on each access, which is quite nice because you may know if you don't check for boundaries and you access an array at an arbitrary position, you can uh, really mess things up. But there are some cases where we know that we are just traversing the array where we test it once that we start at zero and go to size minus one. So we can remove it for some cases and that really saves you some memory, uh, some computation time. And uh, the third thing that uh, we really optimized is, of course, when the students are working in images, they also want to see live images. They don't want to wait for one image to appear at one up to two seconds per image. So, and that was where we started last time. Um, 
that was the time to convert one image in shared memory to one image which can be viewed in record. Um, now we did some optimization and we are now in the range of one to 30 milliseconds uh, per image conversion. And if you really want to display an image live, you need to go to this kind of um, time range. Okay, so now I just uh, want to start with the demonstrations. Um, today I'm, I noticed that there is another record, 6.5, that I haven't tested already. And uh, again, I put my code on uh, GitHub, so don't worry, but you can download it from there. Um, you need this version of the big record image processing li or image computer vision library. And uh, there is currently no release of the so-called Rec Connect binding, uh, which binds the record uh, using the computer vision library to the Connect sensor bar. Okay, so I hope that this will work. Now. Don't bother, you need to restart it at maximum three times because with the new operating system of Apple, they made some mess with the USB stack. Um, second try. Mm -hmm. That's probably why we didn't have a release yet. <laughs> And the third one. And you see it runs. So, um, <clears throat> first of all, I hope uh, that the font is uh, big enough for everybody to view. Um, can even make it a bit uh, smaller. So, these are just visual visualization helpers, and the first thing I want to show you is um, just the very easy live view. So what do we have here? We have uh, this command, um, so everything is just initialized, if it hasn't crashed already, um, and you can grab some video in this kind of unsafe into some formally filled image, which is a four-channel image consisting of the first channel uh, the depth data and the last three images, the uh, last three bands are R, G, um, and B. And what you can then do is uh, arrange this, pick with the depth image and put some status in between. So I hope that this should run. And we will see the, the result. As you see, uh, this is the depth image of you. Due to legal restrictions, I will just monitor myself. Um, and you can see here, that is what you get from the RGB camera. But more interesting is what you get from the depth camera, or not more interesting. But uh, when I appear here, you see that this is really measuring some depth. and you see these gradients falling over, this is just due to scaling. So there is one overflow each uh, 25 centimeters just due to scaling issues. And that's why you see this sign gradient and me approaching here. So what can we do using this data? Um, the first example I want to show you is um, based on thresholding. And usually you threshold an image by 5, 10, 10 minutes, okay, I just need five or so. Um, <laughs> you just threshold an image by a value. So for example, when you have some black objects on some white plate, you can say, okay, that's black, that's white, and then you separate your image. But uh, using the depth image, we can also try to use this thresholding on the depth data. So for example, cut everything that is too far away in the image. And um, this is shown here. The image map is more or less like the usual and well-known map function. 
Um, but it doesn't map on a list, but on an image. So we use the depth image. We look if we are in between a given front and back. This is in millimeters, so somewhere between one meter. And then we give them a flag, if true, and if not, we just ignore it. And then we can use this as a blue screen approach, for example. So what can we do here? We grab again, then we use the depth image to create a mask. We use this image and pump it up to three channels because we need to mask the R, G, the G, and the B channel. And then we combine the images. So we have our mask, we have our RGB image, and we have another scene, which is a library scene. Um, and we can look at this too, but uh, unfortunately it's a bit slow. Uh, ah, you see there is the library, and now I should uh, enter the library somehow. Ah, yeah, there I am. You see, uh, I'm too far away, and this is, uh, should appear now. Uh -huh. I think it's uh, due to the light. Ah, okay, there I am. So. It has a motor, but I haven't activated the steering yet. So I need to do this. Yeah. And so you need, yeah, better. So you now see that I just cut off myself, I cut off more than myself, whatever, using uh, the depth information. But there are some things where the depth couldn't be estimated quite well. So you see a lot of noisy th things, a bit is missing, and so you can, now use image processing methods to fill these missing steps. For example, morphological operations, and I hope this will be a bit better. So you see that uh, it's still not perfect. Uh, somewhere here. I haven't tried it under this lighting condition, so uh, maybe a bit of a problem because the infrared laser is not of such a high intensity. So of course you have to place that in the living room if you want to connect it to your Xbox. Um, and I'm still a bit blinded by the projector, but uh, it more or less works. And so that's uh, what we hope our students can um, explore in the next uh, summer So you see that this is also not really real time. You see the garbage collectors running all the time. And you see that the number of ticks, which is real time, is not the number of refreshes. And both are not the number of real ticks. So, just close this again. Um, by the way, this uh, interactive view is the animate framework, which is uh, built in to Racket, so not a strange thing, but just the basic thing we use. Um, so, what else can we do? I got uh, one other demonstration where you just uh, use the depth information, forget the RGB data, and just select the first thing that is inside the depth image and uh, call this a pointer. So for example, we all know that uh, in former times we had some mouse or some keyboard input. Now you touch on everything. Um, but you could also use such a device um, as a pointer. Yeah. So you can just move it here. Um, by the way, the, the yellow thing is painted using the Dr. Records paint facility. And you see that this uh, detection runs quite well. And this is just due to the fact that you can break whenever you found something. So it doesn't really depend on the image size or so. Yeah, oh, sometimes it isn't found, but on most times it is found. So you can see, okay, this is very basic approach, very basic input methods. Um, you could also use some switching. Oh, doesn't work, okay. But you see that you get this position in Dr. Record so students could use it for input, for example, for games, for control, for steering, for whatever, just like they used the mouse before. <laughs> okay. Oh, and it's still on. Should better close it. Okay, so that was uh, the live demonstration. We don't need this one. And that brings me back to my agenda for the very 
few last slides. So when we started, um, we designed the big racket as a binding to a famous computer vision library uh, and to bring the functionality into Dr. Racket. So it wasn't meant to be a real-time nor near real-time um, capable. But now, using some memory reuse, unsafe access, and fast image to record image conversion, we are able to give our students some valuable tool which they can use and they can exploit live data now, not just work on static images. And uh, as a demonstration, um, we selected this device, the Kinect sensor, um, which is still, the first rows might see it, is still emitting these laser pattern. Um, you get these RGB da data stream, which provides depth data too, quite nice. Um, we have uh, integrated this as images, which are understood by the image processing um, library. And we already added some simple processing algorithms that the student doesn't, uh, don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so we hope that this one is easy enough for our undergrad students uh, to be used in their projects. But of course, it's still under development. You've seen this uh, during the crash and start sequence. Um, there is still no release yet. Um, and as an outlook, what we also want uh, is that we want to implement basic algorithms on these RGBD to human skeleton, for example. Um, that's mainly what the Microsoft games are using. They have some basic algorithms trying to detect a person, then trying to match a skeleton, and then use your skeleton, for example, for some dancing game or whatever. Um, we also want to test further with a garbage collector because, uh, as I heard, uh, there has been a new garbage collector introduced in Rackets 6.4, and uh, maybe we are somewhere closer to the real image processing in Racket now. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, so one problem of uh, the garbage collection was the animate framework which we used. So um, this is built in Racket and students could easily use that, but uh, there are some things that are quite strange. So you may need to have some text update in this until it updates your image because some, some it doesn't get that there are new information inside the image. And um, on the other end, I had some crashes where the garbage collection caught away my image, which I was refilling all the time. So I'm not quite sure how this happened. And fortunately, it vanished. Yeah, But um, this is uh, when you're really hacking into Racket, because I'm just refilling some static memory address all the time, and it somehow got lost. But uh, these are now fixed. And what I think that the main... Um, 6.4 opportunity rec uh, garbage collector is that this is some kind of incremental garbage collection. So it should have some advantages. And they say that this is enabled by default for the animate framework. <coughs> I'm, I haven't investigated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was cheating. I didn't get the fingertip. I just uh, get the closest object. Yeah, so when my nose is the closest object, it'll track my nose. When, uh, when my elbow is the closest object, yeah, okay, so. <laughs> Let me give this a try again so it should still work. Cheating. It's still impressive. Yeah. So, uh, as I understand it, the speed up comes from essentially uh, being very careful of how you use memory. Um, yes. Is 
first first aspect is the careful use of memory, and the second is that uh, or is that you carefully detect what is the internal memory representation of an image in Racket. Because Racket uses the Cairo library, I'm not sure if I'm, anybody knows it, and there's some rearrangement and some byte, you need to have uh, the correct type after the conversion and so. But if you convert it so as Racket would have expected it, then you're quite fast. But you can't get any faster because otherwise you need to cheat Racket somehow. Yeah, because there is one function that can create um, a Racket image out of a byte array, but this is written in Racket. So I assume that this could be even faster. Does that hardware work in daylight? Um, define daylight. Outside? Sunlight? No. Okay. So outside is a problem because um, I'm not sure if uh, somewhere stated, no, but it's a typical laser class one or whatever, so it's safe to use in living environments. And uh, well, the sun, we all know, is not so safe without sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, so the intensity is much higher. And it also has a problem with uh, transparent surfaces or reflective surfaces. Yeah. Okay, other questions?